목요일 1시부터 사실은 75분이죠. 75분이고요. 어, Saturday, Sunday, 다음에 추석. 은 코스도 안 보여요. 그죠? 어, 그리고 그 수험 신청을 <웃음> 하고 싶은데 시간이 겹쳐서 하는 계신가요, 혹시? 어, 시간이 어떻게 겹치니까? 그, 물어봤는데요. 예, 예. 월요일 수요일 세미나가 겹치는데 예, 예. 수업이 사실 9월 20일에 시작했거든요. 아, 그래요? 근데 전산상으로만 신청이 안 돼요. 아, 그래요? 혹시 되면 안 돼요? 그냥 다른, 다른 동안 다른 동안. 예, 예. 그 다른 학생은? 
concert groups. And again, this first lecture, in fact, I don't assume that you know what a regular concert group is. There going to be a regular polytope. I'm going to explain what a regular polytope is. Okay? What I am assuming is that you recognize these. Yeah? What are these? Their symmetries. You can talk about, you know, if you look at all the groups of motions, they form a group. Right? And the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about does there exist? So these are examples of regular polytopes. Okay? Um, they're low dimensional examples, they're only in three dimensions. And so the first question is is there a four dimensional regular polytope? Is there a five dimensional regular polytope? Are there regular polytopes in all dimensions? And the main goal for the first two lectures is to give you a classification of all regular polytopes. Okay? And once we have a classification of all regular polytopes, then we'll look at the symmetry groups of the regular polytopes, and all of those will be examples of Coxeter groups. Okay? So the symmetry group of a regular polytope is a Coxeter group. And it's the easiest example, it's one of the motivating examples. Okay. Um, and for reasons that you'll see later, we'll call these spherical Coxeter groups. Uh, the second topic is going to be Z groups and Euclidean Coxeter groups. And again, I'm not assuming that you know what Lie groups are. Uh, Lie groups is a very well-developed theory. Uh, we're not going to do very much with Lie groups, but I want to just give you a little bit of history, a little bit of, of overview, just enough so that you can see that in order to understand Lie groups, it's important to understand things that are called Euclidean Coxeter groups. And we'll also classify these. Uh, these are going to be, um, let, me, let me say just one word about Euclidean Coxeter groups. So this, if you look at it very roughly, it looks like a sphere. Right? And so you could actually think of the symmetries of a regular polytope as the symmetries of a sphere. And in the same way, the Coxeter groups that show up in Lie theory are going to be symmetries of Euclidean space. Okay? And the easiest example of a Euclidean Coxeter group is if you take the, the tiling of the plane by equilateral triangles and then look at its symmetry group, that's a Euclidean Coxeter group. Okay? So, um, these are sort of very um, important concepts in mathematics. The regular polytopes generalizing the platonic solids. Lie groups are important for large parts of mathematics and physics and lots of applications. And both of these end up depending in a very fundamental way on their symmetry groups, the, the, the heart of the theories, end up being very closely related to spherical coxeter groups and Euclidean coxeter groups. They have a lot of symmetry. They have, they have a lot of similarities. They're very similar structure. And once we see the structure, then We'll talk about uh, Coxeter groups in general. And so this will be um, uh, there's there's quite a few Coxeter groups, and very there's a very very special list that form the spherical ones, a very very special list that form the Euclidean ones, and then there are lots more. There are quite a few. But the structure of a general Coxeter group is very closely tied and generalizes the structure of these two key things. Can you see this? Yeah? Okay. All right. 
How far can you see? Can you see this? Yeah. <laughs> yes? No. Okay. This? Yeah, yeah? Okay. Alright. Okay. So four. So once we have the structure, so so first two days, second two days, fifth and sixth day. So now we're in the middle of the course for the final two topics. The fourth topic we'll do linear representations. and basic facts. And then the final two days, which will be the ones closest to the kind of research that, that I do and Professor Kim does, is um, non-positively curved spaces example of a regular polytope that I want to mention, and I'm going to number it number two. The first example is going to be regular polygons. <laughs> I'm not going to draw a seven-sided polygon. Okay. So, um, and so there's one for every m. There's one for every integer, right? So equilateral triangle, square, regular pentagon, regular hexagon, and so on. Regular m gon. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm starting with two is that my examples are going to be the number is going to indicate the dimension. And these are two-dimensional examples. Okay? The three-dimensional examples are going to be the five platonic solids. And I'm not going to draw them. Okay? But well, I'll draw one. First two. Convex hall of a 
finite collection of points in the space. So this Okay. Um, that makes sense so long as you know what convex hull means. So what is convex hull? What, what does convex mean?
for a rhombus. And so the idea of being a regular polytope is you want, <coughs> you want it to be a polytope, a convex hull of a finite set of points, but you want it to be as symmetric as possible. Okay? But we'll have to talk about how symmetric that is. And we'll get an exact definition. <coughs> okay. So <coughs> the um, let me let me tell you the goal for the day. So the goal for today is I want to go through examples and I want to give you a statement of a theorem that gives us the classification. And I will get as far, I will do as much of the proof as we can, and we'll finish the proof next time. Okay? Alright. Um, <coughs> Let's try four dimensions. Four dimensions. Um, now it gets hard, right? So four dimensions. Um, maybe it would help to talk about, um, well, let's, let's actually describe a square. So one way to describe a square is the set of all points x, y, so that x is between minus 1 and 1, y is between minus 1 and 1. Okay. And I'm doing this for a reason. I want the center of the square to be at the origin. Okay. Um, is there a, so you can make a similar definition for a cube, right? And maybe I'll call it a three cube. It's the set of all points x, y, z. So the coordinates are between minus one and one. There's a, um, so this goes to this goes to dot 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 and Q. Okay? There's also a generalization of this. Right? And <clears throat> these are called simplices. And for the simplices, 